what's up? My name is Dom. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I typically make bookish content, movie content, and anything else in between because I like to do whatever I want on this channel and today is going to be bookish content. For today's video, I am vlogging my experience reading the manga Orange by Ichigo Takano. This is a very well-loved series in both the manga community and just the book community in general. I actually discovered this from a booktube channel. She also does anime content. Her name is Opal. She's over at Opal Lesson and I'll link her channel down below. At first I had like no intention of reading the series because I was under the impression it's like teen like teen YA contemporary which I'm not really a fan of anymore however it is not contemporary it's more so sci-fi because it's about a girl named Naho who's in the 11th grade she gets a letter from herself 10 years into the future telling her she needs to watch over a new student named Kakuru and it's basically their adventures from there like the main question is why why is she watching over this boy. I thought it'd be really fun to vlog this experience since it's such a well-loved story just to see what everyone's talking about just so y'all can see my reactions as well. I got these from the library I have because I like the manga's pretty short I guess like this is half this is half the series and I do have volume two of the completed edition on the floor somewhere. Thank God the Chicago Public Library has 15 renewals because I'm on renewal three and I'm finally picking it up. If you've never read the story before but would like to watch this video, please go into it knowing it's going to be spoilers galore. I will talk about what I read throughout the video. So without further ado, let's start reading. Okay, so I've read chapter one so far, which is technically called letter one. So our girl Naho got the letter from herself 10 years into the future. And of course it predicted the new kid in town, like the summary said. Um, except in this letter, it like told her things that she regrets doing. So it told her everything that would happen and that all came true, which I thought was interesting, even the most minute details. But it also said in the letter, of all times to invite Kakuru, this is the one time I don't want you to do that. However, um, what's her face? Naho and friends still invite him. There's a lot of info dump, like it was just name after name, so I don't have all their names in place just yet. After that hangout, Kakuru didn't show up to school for two weeks. He claimed it was because he was cutting classes, but I'm just wondering how this is just going to play out in the future now. And they didn't really mention it later throughout the chapter, so I'm just, I'm just wondering how that's going to come into play and if that was truly the snowball effect of everything that's about to happen. But two weeks later is the baseball game that was also mentioned in these letters, April 20th, except she said she regrets not taking up pinch hitter. So she tells 16-year-old um, Naho, take it up because I regret not doing that. And you see Naho's inner turmoil. We learn that she doesn't like to inconvenience people. She doesn't like to inconvenience others. You see her going through that like, oh, well, I can't do it because what if I miss it? Then we lose. It's all my fault. So at first she says no. But then the letter said her when, her when her friend batted, they lost the game. So she said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And next thing you know, they win. They got a home run. Um, everyone's congratulating them. The letter also says that's the day she starts to like Kakuru. And that does come true. So Kakuru is looking out for her. He's no He notices when she's hurt. Earlier they traded bread when she didn't actually say anything. She really wanted the curry bread. But she didn't say it, so he traded with her. And her shoes, her gym shoes are too small. And Kakuru pointed that out and he said, he basically said, I'm watching you. And like she tells him to, as long as people don't notice that she's hurt, she's fine. But Kakuru literally says, like, I've noticed. And like, yeah, I would, uh, girl, this is a type of shit I loved reading when I was in high school. If a man said that to me, we're getting married. So I don't really blame her for falling in love with him. And then the very end of the chapter, it takes place 10 years in the future. We see a 26-year-old Naho with a 26-year-old Suwa, and he has a kid. And they're talking about bringing flowers. What she's bringing is a secret. And I'm like, oh my god, Kakuru's dead in 10 years. And that actually is how the chapter ends. The end of the letter says... Let me actually, like, read what she says, because I thought it was very well worded. But there is one big one, regret, that still haunts me. Here, 10 years in the future, Kakuru is no longer with us. Don't lose something so precious. Watch over Kakuru with all your heart. And that leads me to believe he he didn't die like naturally like of a sickness or something. It leads me to believe that he got killed or he was killed and it could have been like just something the fr I'm not saying the friends are murderers it just could have been something like they did by accident like you know they went on a camping trip he got hit by a train or something like stuff like that so I'm I'm truly at this point I'm very intrigued with it like that's a hell of an ending here so I'm truly wondering what that one big regret is and I'm and I'm worried it has something to do with the fact that she invited him that first day he moved to the school 
despite being told not to do that. I was like, oh, he's gotta be dead in the future. And like, I was waiting for that reveal to happen later, but no, it's like the last sentence of chapter one. So we're in for a ride. It's gonna be a doozy. I'm noticing right away this is gonna be a story of self-discovery. It's gonna be about a timid girl learning to love herself and learning not to be a people pleaser. That's how I would describe Naoho with the way she doesn't like inconveniencing others around her. And obviously like Kakuru seems like he's gonna be the driving force for all of that. It does kind of hit close to home. I also have a lot of regrets. I mean nothing major like a dead friend or anything but like like the little things like Naho regret, like 26 year old Naho regrets not being the pinch hitter. And you know, I like regret not doing more with myself in high school. Like I was that kid, like I mean there were clubs I tried out for, like sports and dance teams I tried out for, I just didn't happen to get them. So I'm glad I can at least say that, that I at least tried for those. But there are also other clubs I didn't join. Like I was that kid where I would just go straight home once the bell rang. Sometimes I would stay after school and it was just to like hang out with friends. But you know, my friend would then have to leave for dance lessons. But I didn't have any of that. I didn't, I chose not to do it, so I went home. I, I do have regrets about that. Like, I mean, there weren't a lot of clubs in my high school that I was particularly interested in. So I don't, like, regret it in that sense. But, you know, maybe, like, I regret, like, not starting my own club. Not, like, starting the club I've always wanted to be a part of. I, I wasn't really a yes man in high school. I said, a, I said no to a lot of things. I wish I said yes more often. I have since learned how to do that. I have, and, like, obviously, like, I've learned my limits, too. I learned when not to be burnt out. And that's part of growing up. And I could see Naho's gonna go on that same experience. So me and Naho, we're gonna... We're gonna be like this, I can already tell. But I do need to go to bed. It is 11.30. I have to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow for work. Hopefully I can do some reading on the bus maybe or reading after work because I didn't really want to put this down. This was very, very interesting. And I'm glad she actually listened to the second part of the letter. Like I was really scared she was gonna just say no and like stand her ground and just be a bench warmer. But I'm glad she went through with it so that's one less regret to have when you're an adult and you know because sometimes it is the little things like that it is saying you know it is saying no to the birthday party it is saying no to being the pinch hitter like and people like people don't talk about that enough like sometimes it truly is the little things and I'm glad this manga seems to be seems to be diving into that Oh my god, you guys, his mom killed herself. Hey, I'm back. So I've officially finished. I'm one third, I'm one third of the way through this book. Um, so which I guess means I'm done with volume one of like the original like orange series setup, what have you. So because you know how I was saying in the last clip, I was really worried the for the future. His death had something to do with the day they invited him out when they weren't supposed to, which granted I guess you could twist it to be that, but no he wasn't there because his mom killed himself, which goes back to why his mom's not making lunches for him. Because everyone noticed that, with, I don't even, now I don't remember their name, sorry it's been a few days since I've read this because of work and stuff. Fuck, 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 what's his name? Kakuru. Everyone noticed that Kakuru wasn't bringing in lunches, so our main character Naho? Yeah, Naho. <laughs> she offered to make him lunch and then later that day he confides in her what happened. And I'm upset. That's so sad. Man, that's fucking sad. And that's basically letter two. And then at the end of the chapter where everyone is coming together and they are adults, um, future Naho mentions that it's the first time in, since high school the five of them got together. And you do find out that Kakuru dies the winter of his 17th year. At this point we're still not sure. But I did keep reading. Letter 3 had me in fucking tears. So as adults, they're digging up this time capsule that they all made and they all wrote letters to themselves. These letters are essentially saying like, oh, I'm gonna be successful at this, blah blah blah. And like, they decide to read his letter anyway and it's nothing about himself. It's just him like, wishing the best for everyone. Um, and everyone was really confused so they were saying like, why, why is he saying this? And then someone mentions like, oh, it's like he, he knew he was gonna die. And that's when the realization hit for them that Kakuru killed himself. And guys, I was, cr I don't want to say I was sobbing, that's exaggerating, but I, I actually cried reading that chapter. I had tears streaming down my face and looking at the pictures of Suma and what's the guy with the glasses, I can't remember names right now, but like Suma and the guy with the glasses just crying was, was heartbreaking. And everyone else too, and just kind of like with the voices that I imagine them to have. 
but especially the two guys because like if you're new here men crying is my weakness for some reason every time a woman and a man could be crying for the same thing but as soon as the man starts crying that, that I'm out I'm done <laughs> I'm crying too I guess I should have seen that coming because I was really worried he was like I said I was really worried something like killed him. I don't know why I wasn't expecting the culprit to be himself. This leads me to worry about what's next for this story because like what is making him so depressed that he is getting to that point? Like what made him so depressed that he got to that point because because that, that's just heartbreaking. Is his mom one of the reasons? Was something else going on? Because he was only 17 and just watching his friends be really upset and it makes me wonder what they were told. I don't know if she mentioned what they were told. It says Kakuru was killed in the traffic accident the winter of his second year of high school. So that means he essentially walked into oncoming traffic purposely. That's so sad, man. And just like, like, look at that artwork. Just everyone crying. That's so upsetting. Oh my god. That, so I was a wreck during the beginning of this chapter. Naho is realizing the future is changing because according to the letter, um, Kakuru kind of declined being on the soccer team, but then that next morning, Kakuru was like, no, no, I, I joined. So she's gonna take this as an opportunity to not let him date that one girl that has his, that has her eyes on him. Future Naho is like, please admit to him how you feel, because at this point Naho is developing romantic feelings for him. But unfortunately she could not stop him from saying yes to this bitch, like this girl that he started dating is horrible because they had the same story like she's from Tokyo moved to the small town but Kakuru is really nice and you know kind of embracing this new culture per se whereas this other girl doesn't like she's calling these people like country bumpkins and saying they're ugly oh she's pretty for a country bumpkin which is a backhanded compliment oh and I guess it was a whole thing because Kakuru wrote left a note in the like in her eraser asking Naho if, she, if he should date this girl and I guess future Naho noticed that noticed that note way too late, so she's like telling Naho look in the eraser today. And what happened was Naho gave the response of no, but Kakuru saw it too late. He didn't see it until after school, so that's how that happened. And Naho was understandably upset because the guy she likes is in a relationship with someone, you know. Girl, I've been there. I feel that. So then the fourth and final letter of this volume is basically Kakuru with this girl and Nahu's really understandably upset and feels awkward because she doesn't want to like mingle into their relationship. So she kind of stops talking to Kakuru, always turns her back on her. So future Naho tells her, don't do that. Kakuru needs to talk about something. And there is an instant where, instance where he says, I need to talk to you. But Naho runs away and she's saying to herself like, I can't do this future me. I'm so sorry. But that comes into play later because Little Miss Pris, the girl that Kakuru is dating, purposely pushes Naho to the ground and tries to act like it was an accident because to me it, it feels like she's jealous of Naho. Either that or she's just salty that Kakuru is talking to other girls because she actually tells him at one point like he's not allowed to talk to other girls. And Kakuru, thank god, actually stood up for Naho which I was really happy to see and he broke up with the girl because of one and one of the reasons was because of that incident. The other reason is because he even said they weren't really like meshing well together. He didn't really was just wasn't interested in her after like getting to know her. She just had a pretty face. But I feel like that instance was definitely the turning point in their relationship. Naho does get very uncomfortable and runs away and comes across Suma who who witnessed the whole thing and is basically and he was there for her the whole side. Like he was very sympathetic when Kakuru started dating this girl and saw how upset Naho was, which Good on him because I was getting the vibes that he was in love with her and I'll get to that in a second. After she runs away and runs into him, he was telling her like, it's okay to want to talk to him. Like, that is your friend, which I agree with him. Like, you should be able to like to talk to these people no matter who they're dating. But it was him that kind of like knocked some sense into Naho and was basically telling her like, he, he does want to talk to you. And after that conversation, that's when Naho was like, you know, it's actually rude of me to be turning my back on him because I wouldn't like that if he did that to me. So she goes out of her way to run to Kakuru and find him and then apologizes for what she's done. And that's when Kakuru like thanks her and also says, I broke up with Miss Bitch. And then she, sa she says, call out to me again and I won't turn away. And he actually does start crying, which... Okay, right in the gut. He claims he forgot what he wanted to talk about, but Naho sees through it. She's like, there's something you were worried about. And he was like, isn't that obvious? Ueda, that's her name. And then he says, I think I'm going to break up with her. So he actually hadn't done it yet. Um, and then they have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about it. When asking why he's going to break up with Ueda, she basically, she asks if it's because of the fight and like, 
Like, we know that's one of the reasons, but he basically says, no, it's because on your note you said I should not ask her out. And he says, I didn't like not being able to talk to you, Naho. That's why I'm doing this. And I do think that's sweet. And it hints she, he has romantic feelings for her and won't admit it. Because he says there's someone he likes a lot more, so Naho asks why. Because, girl, both of us, we're both curious. He says it's a fucking secret. Like, for, for who? Who, who is it a secret from? Definitely not us, because we, we see you. We see you, Kakuru. Come on, just admit it. I want these two to end up together. And that's basically where I left off, so that was kind of a quickish, not so quickish summary. I, I wasn't too sure in the first letter, but by the second chapter, or by the second chapter, future Suwa and future Naho are married, which I don't really know how I feel. I think it's because I'm just so hung up on Naho being with Kakuru. That's why I'm like, mmm. I don't know, but it does make sense because like in earlier scenes when she's interacting with Kakuru, you can kind of see and on, you don't, you don't read it obviously because he's not being explicit about it, but you can kind of see on Sua's face that he is jealous and I was thinking, does he like Naho? I think he likes Naho. It's revealed in their letters that he was in love with her since high school. So I wonder how that conversation went where she finally like said yes and they even have a kid together so that's interesting. But I think now the story is more so going to be about like a it's just gonna be beautifully tragic, tragically beautiful, what have you. And I'm a little worried to dive in again because I don't want to cry again. That was very, very depressing. But I also do want to know if they are, if Kakuru is saved and how much the future actually changes because it is proven time and time again. Sometimes it is the little things that can change a future drastically. So is Kakuru gonna survive? Are they going to end up married? Even if he does survive, what if she doesn't marry him? What if she still ends up marrying Suwa? So I'm very interested to see that dynamic and see how that pans out. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this camera off and we are going to go back to reading. Okay, Azula. So I actually finished this a month ago and never just never updated But I guess let's let's get started because there's a lot that happened in the next chapter their cheat their teacher introduces the concept of parallel universes and this is the part of the story that kind of Gives, gives me some answers because I was questioning how the future like her future self Naho's future self was able to get into contact with her and how this is working essentially and in summary basically what's happening is that our, our fictional narrators essentially telling us that future Naho is actually just in a different world than the present day Naho is and in the beginning of the story I'm thinking Naho is literally changing the future like her future self that she's speaking to or not speaking to but in like in line with is going to cease to exist but it seems like that's not happening at all like the future Naho and the future Suwa and so on that we get to meet aren't going to cease to exist because they are literally on a different world so while they keep living their lives present day Naho is going to have just a completely different future than these people then the next two chapters there is this festival being held at their school at this point you do find out that present day Suwa does like Naho which is kind of obvious the thing I did find interesting though I was actually kind of expecting Suwa to be like super jealous of Kakuru, which he is in a sense, but he's also not, like, he's also helping them get together. He's not being a cock block, he's not being a dick, and I do appreciate that, because I feel like in every other story that I've read growing up where this happens, th the guy who likes a girl is a huge dick, and, do and does get in the way. But Suwa's not doing that, which makes him a, a great friend in my book. So Ueda, the girl that Kakuru broke up with, but absolutely refuses to accept, she has not, she gives Naho these fruit boxes or whatever, these fruit juice boxes, and tells her to go on some assignment to put this on some teacher's desk, blah blah blah, and that's just to distract Naho that, so that she herself, she as an Ueda, can go see the fireworks with Kakuru, knowing damn well Kakuru doesn't want that, like she just won't let the fuck go. And Naho, unfortunately being the people pleaser that she is, and being the yes man that she is, she does accept despite it not being what she wanted. Granted, she did try to fight back saying she's busy, but 
Lena's threatened her with some somehow, some way. The two girls, they come across Naho and offer to bring the juice boxes up themselves, while the two guys, Su and Hajita, when they see Uwaro running to where Kakuru is, they turn her around. They essentially lie to her, and this, which is what convinces her to turn around and go to said place. And it's really funny because those friends work together unknowingly, because the boys did that thinking Naho was already with Kakuru, which I found hilarious, and I just need Uwaro to let the fuck go. But Kakuru and Naho do get to see if the fireworks together, and it was really cute because they admitted to each other in a sense that they like each other, not explicitly, but Naho basically said out of all the guys in the group, she would date Kakuru, and Kakuru said out of all the girls in the group, he would date Naho. The next chapter, the future versions of Kakuru's friends are talking to his grandma, and here we learn that at one point he actually did try to commit suicide. He met up with a friend from Tokyo who basically laughed in his face. He admitted his- Kakuru himself admitted his feelings, and his friends laughed in his face, making him feel really guilty, which is you know, something we unfortunately see in real life. I still think there is that stigma against suicide in real life. So this caused Kakuru the next day to attempt it. Um, so the letter from future Naho said, get him to open up about his feelings. He needs to admit it to someone who won't laugh in his face. And then this chapter is really sad because Kakuru does break down. Like, seeing him crying is really sad. That artwork, that artwork is so well done. But Kakuru feels a lot of guilt. He feels like he couldn't save his mom. Because what happened is that his mom was growing worse. I don't remember if she was sick or just like just not mentally well. But she was growing worse. Often guilted him by saying like, don't you ever leave me, you always need to be with me. So Kakuru admits to Naho that he was, he was tired of seeing his mom all the time. He thought one day without her would be fine. So when they asked him to go hang out, that's why he said yes. But unfortunately, that is the day she killed herself. So now Kakuru feels like he's at fault because... He, you know, he went against his mom's wishes. He assumes his mom thought, oh, he doesn't want to be with me anymore, so I'll just, I'll just get rid of myself. You know, Kakuru, being this young teenage boy, I don't, I don't blame him. I, it's not his fault. Even if, like, it was his fault, I still wouldn't blame him, because that's not something you control. That is not a responsibility you should be putting on a child. And I just, I feel really bad for him that he feels this immense guilt. And it, it is something that should be talked about in real life, because I'm sure like, this does happen in real life with some parents and children where, where you know, parents blame their kids for stuff and kid, when shit hits the fan, kids, their kids do take it the heart and blame them for, they blame themselves for something that's just widely outside of, outside of their control, like, which is in Kakuru's case, like, assuming his mom actually thought that. Like, that's widely out of his control. The fact that she did kill herself means there were a lot more problems than Kakuru thought. It's not his fault, and it's, it sucks. Like, he is a young he is a young guy who should be able to go out with his friends without feeling that guilt. But I, could, I do understand where he's coming from and why he feels like that, and I wish he didn't. Um, and I also, and again, Naho was that person where he can confide to, and he later says he ends up not seeing that friend from Tokyo. And I do think this chapter was an excellent commentary on how, like, suicides handle as well. Well, not really. It didn't really talk about this, but it just made me think about it, how when it does come to suicide, we, especially, like, in Kakuru's case, we tend to, like, demonize those people. I saw it with Chester Bennington. Like, yes, a lot of people gave their condolences, but also a lot of people were calling him weak and an asshole from killing, for killing himself. A lot of people think people who commit suicide are selfish. And I don't, it just, I just hate when people say, like, people who have suicide ideation are selfish. Because, oh, so many people love you when, like, so that's just not how it works sometimes. You just feel, like, a lot of people who commit suicide feel like this immense guilt for something and they truly think the world is better off without them like when you are in that mindset you think what you're doing is selfless because you're you're helping the world it's a very unfortunate mindset to have and you need to be in an extremely dark place to have that which i wish people both in this book and in real life well i shouldn't say in this book because his friends are understanding but i wish people i just wish people in real life would would understand that and, and would be willing to reach out and i mean i know you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped but i at least like wish more people would at least make an effort to at least understand because that is a that is an extremely scary place to be in and that's why i am glad naho reached out because now now that he was able now that kakuru was able to admit what was happening in the other universe he attempted suicide in this universe 
he he does not. You also find out at the end of this chapter that Sua received a letter from his future self as well, which threw me for a loop. We get to see some insights from those letters, and it's actually commendable that future Sua does get what he wants. You know, he likes Naho and does get to marry her and have a child with her, but in these letters he still tells his past self to give Naho and Kakaru some space and let them grow and learn together and actually be a wingman for them. I personally think that's commendable just because in any other story I feel like future Sua wouldn't let that happen. Like he would say, he would say, oh you marry the girl of your dreams, don't do anything. But in this one he truly does care for his friend and like despite his own feelings, wants Kakaru to be happy. There's a whole thing with giving Kakaru gifts for her 17th birthday, and I thought it was very interesting in the present day universe. The gifts they're giving him match the gifts the future universe give him. I'm kind of interested, interested to see what exactly happened there. Why did the characters in the present day universe, why were they able to give those gifts to him in person, whereas the ones in the future had to give these gifts to a shrine, essentially. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's because they didn't know it was his 17th birthday. Like, in the present day, like, the future selves didn't know. They wrote it in the letter, so therefore the present day Naho could figure it out. I think that was also the same chapter where they finally got that Weta bitch to, like, leave Naho alone because she keeps picking on her. Um, and there was one point where she even goes up to Naho. She's like, hey, can you give him something else because I'm gonna get him the fancy bag. And it's like, Kakuru doesn't fucking like you. Leave him the fuck alone. Let it go. Like, I've met people like this in real life, and it drives me fucking bonkers. And, and like, I get it. I've had my heart broken too, and yeah, like, in the past, I've been tempted to just text those people anyway. But I don't. I put the phone down, because I know in the long run, it's gonna be better if I do that. And I just wish people in real life would understand that, and I wish this Uweta bitch figured it out sooner, but I think, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I I know it took for Azu and Chino to threaten her, specifically Chino. I think she like literally threatened to punch her in the face. And maybe she actually did. I think she actually did slap her to get her to leave Naho alone and to get Uweta to finally realize Kakuru doesn't like you because you are a fucking asshole. And I'm glad. I think more mean kids need to get their ass beat, quite frankly. It was just also really weird because Ueda herself never actually spoke to Kakuru or wasn't shown to talk to him once he broke up with her. So all the shit she's finding out is just like from eavesdropping. Like she didn't speak to Kakuru about the back. She just eavesdropped on him and Naho and then went up to Naho. And it's like, if, if you're not speaking to him, how do you truly think he's going to react to this? Like, he's not gonna just jump back in your arms. But whatever, she's gone, I hope we never see her again in this story. There's another chapter where Sua and Naho work together to get Kakadu to admit his feelings, because they've noticed how sad his eyes look. And then we notice Chino and Azu were eavesdropping on that conversation, and at that point, that's when I was, like, super suspicious, but I will get to that later. Then we get to the turning point of the story where, like, we're, we're, where we realize those letters may not be helpful anymore. So Kakadu faints, and there's this whole conversation about how he's not eating enough, the friends assume it's because he's just not mentally well. Sua and Naho go off to the side together and discuss the letters, and Sua has this whole revelation, so to speak, that maybe the letters aren't helping. Like, maybe he's, like, because the letter said to get Kakuru to join that soccer team, because in the other universe he doesn't, and he's depressed about it, but Sua's worried that by making him join, it's actually hurting him physically. This is also when they notice the letters really aren't lining up anymore, because again, they are changing the trajectory of their lives, because there's this relay coming up, and Kakuru was chosen because he won some race in a gym class. He, he, lo he, like, breaks his leg or something and then loses, and he's feeling really guilty about it, because, you know, Azu didn't win that baseball game, so he felt really pressured to win for the school. Doesn't win, gets really depressed about it. But in this present day universe, we know that whole thing with Azu never happened, so like, do they truly have to worry about Kakuru not winning now? And like, the letter did predict, um, Kakuru does win that gym class race thingy, so he's chosen for the relay, so Suwa and Naho don't know what to do. Did they listen to the letter and not let him win? Or sorry, not let him play? or do they let him do what he wants? They choose to listen to the letter, so there is this whole thing like where they kind of ask him if he's sure. The present day Kakuru has a totally different reaction than what's in the letter. I guess in the letters he was very hesitant to do it, but in the present day he's actually super excited and has no idea what they're talking about. And they kind of guilt him into not thinking he's good enough for the relay anymore, 
But then Azu and Chino speak up and they're like, hey, just let him do what he wants. So what eventually happens is that Kakuru, in the middle of class, he raises his hand and says, you know, I shouldn't really be in the relay, I don't want to represent the class. But then Chino and Azu speak up and they're like, no, we'll represent the class with him. Causing the other students saying like, oh, I never wanted to be a part of this anyway. So they dropped out and soon enough, Hajita, Sua, and Naho all raise their hands and say they're gonna join Kakuru as well and now it's just like this big friend thing. Naho notices how happy Kakuru is about it so she tells Sua she's not gonna read the letters anymore she's just going to rely on instincts. Then during the last chapter of this book there's a little instance where Naho trips she falls in Kakuru's arms and then there's a lot of confusion because she's touching the guy she likes and the and you know he likes her so he's confused as well so he reaches out his hand and she ignores it because I don't think she really understands what's going on. And Kakuru's upset about it. So he walks away pretending like nothing's ever happened. Naho in a panic like talks to her friend. She talks to Sua specifically. And she's like, oh, did, did the letter say anything about this day? Should I do something? And that's when Sua laughs and is like, hey, I thought you weren't going to do that anymore. And then also on the side, we actually see Hajita and Azu talk about something but it's kind of like kept a mystery to their readers. And then as the chapter goes on, you also see Sua pulled aside talking to those, talking to Hajita, Chino, and Azu. Naho's left her own devices and finally the five of them get together and Naho confides like how she's freaking out about how Kakuru reacted. Chino laughs and she's like, dude, he just wants to hold your hand. And she's like, what? And they all make jokes how she's gonna get an ulcer because she freaks out about everything, which is kind of relatable. And then finally, you find out that Hachita, Chino, and Azu have all received letters from their future selves as well, so they actually knew what was going on this entire time. And it's really cute because the last panel is of their future selves, all kind of like huddling, putting their hands in the middle, and all agreeing to save Kakuru's life. And that is the end of volume one. I ended up giving this volume, I think, 4.75 out of 5 stars. I am actually very surprised by how much I am liking the story. It has made me cry, it has made me angry, it has made me really happy, kind of makes me wish I can go back to high school to enjoy the little things and you know fix the things I regret. I absolutely love these characters. I, I need these two to start dating already. They keep pushing it off to the side. Kakuru doesn't really want to ruin, as much as he likes her, he says he doesn't really want to ruin the friendship they've got going. But just, just get, I, I need them to get together because they are so cute together. Just another reason I'm really shocked by this is that I would consider this more so why contemporary with some like sci-fi elements in it, especially when it comes to the parallel universes. And admittedly, I don't really reach for um, why contemporary anymore. I don't, I would definitely consider this romance and I don't really reach for, I've never reached for romance in my whole life. Admittedly, I only picked this up because of how everyone was just raving about it and I like felt like left out and I wanted to see what they were talking about. And I, I'm shocked. I'm very shocked by how much I love this story. And I mean that in a good way. Like, I'm glad I love this story as much as I do. I'm loving the concept of parallel universes rather than, you know, one person ceasing to exist. Because I was kind of waiting for that. I was waiting for the future Naho to just go away as the present day Naho changed the future. But I'm glad, like, she's always going to be there. But I'm still interested to know how the future selves were able to get those letters to their past selves in a whole, in a whole other universe. Like, how, how did that work? It may never be explained to us because I think I, it may be one of those things where there needs to be like a suspension of disbelief, but I'm still I'm still genuinely intrigued by what's going on. I'm loving Kakuru as a character. He is a very kind-hearted boy and I just want to give him a hug. Teenager me would have had a huge crush on him. I'm also loving how little these friends quarrel. Quarrel. I was genuinely expecting a turning point of the story. Actually, the whole thing with the letters, since Ka since Naho and Suwa had letters, and at one point I thought the others did it, I thought that would create some tension and some fighting. Like, I was expecting Chino, especially Chino because of how confrontational she can be, I was expecting her to, like, call them out on it. Especially because we see in the future selves, they mentioned that once Kakuru died, there was a lot more fighting within the group. Azu and Hajito really, really fought, which is kind of shocking because you see that as teenagers, they, they like each other but won't admit it. So I was expecting more tension, but I'm glad that, I'm actually kind of glad we don't have that. I mean, sure, to create some drama in the story, but I don't, I don't think that's what the story is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be this lighthearted, wholesome story. So I'm glad we don't have that arguing within the friend group. I'm glad that all her friends are willing to help her and I'm glad to know that even without those letters they were working together this whole time and it just actually makes it better that they've all gotten letters because I think that's a great way to because I actually was wondering that I'm like well if the future cells were all together at one point 
why does only Naho get letters but like no one else is getting them so I'm glad I got those answers. One thing I hope to see in future chapters is just that the future the, the scenes with the future selves are a lot happier because throughout this volume I kind of just been crying every time they had a scene together just because so sad so in, in the future in the future chapters I hope there's some happier scenes. I'm really excited to see what like the turning point of the story is like what the climax is that's gonna punch me in the gut I'll probably cry because I'm a little baby. But I'm going to stop the video here. It is 12.30 in the morning. I have to wake up at 5 a.m. for work. I don't know when I'm going to start volume two, but hopefully when I check in, it's because I read like three chapters and not because I read the whole fucking book. But we will see. We will see. So peace out until next time. Mm -hmm.